Raila Odinga recently made a very big blunder on a local media station. He was on Ramogi TV and he got so comfortable, probably because he was speaking in his local dialect, he was speaking in Luo, he felt relaxed, he wasn't being asked tough questions, and so he found himself in that state of being in relaxation. He divulged information that he ought not to have divulged. In fact, the Azimio principles, the likes of Karua and uh, Kalonzo, and even Makau Mutua, who is their lead advisor, were definitely punching their fists in the air as they listened to the interpretation of that very interview because they themselves do not understand Lu. So Ray Lodinga made the blunder of coming out to say that he himself and his caucus, they had brought in a group of ethical hackers who were monitoring the IBC servers and that they were based in Athi River and from time to time they would be moved from Athi River to Kiambu and to other areas in order to avoid being pinged down. That in and of itself was damning enough. But then there's a foreign media house that came out with a story that Israelis were actively hacking and trying to tamper with the Kenyan election. And one of the people who are a victim of that particular scheme is Denis Itumbi. I just want to read you the post that Denis Itumbi has put out and also the cover pages of some various newspapers in this country today so that you can just get the whole scope of the story. So this is what Denis Itumbi posted on Facebook and I quote, I confirm that there was increased activity on my telegram towards the end of the campaign period. However, I do not use Telegram for any communication. However, after noticing the increased activity, we decided to intentionally mislead those who are trying to obtain information illegally. We staged a communication on agents, saying how unnecessary they were and how costly the exercise was. We even concluded we will pick agents. Of course, in reality, we invested our entire time recruiting agents. We now know the hackers and their agents believed our staged conversation. No wonder. In this part where he's saying no wonder, I'm sure he meant to say no wonder Raila Odinga and Azimio did not put agents in Mount Kenya because they also thought that these guys don't have agents. So Dennis, <laughs> Dennis Itumbi was actually misleading these guys. He knew that his telegram is hacked they are monitoring him, Azimio is monitoring him through the Israelis. And he began talking about agents are too expensive, we don't need agents, we'll just do without them. And Azimio went on to buy that story and they didn't put agents in Mount Kenya. Whether their vote was stolen or not, <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> then he goes on to say, and because Tinga had said they hired hackers, Nation had to bring down a story. And on the cover of Nation it says, how Israeli hackers meddled in Kenyan elections. On the cover of the standard today, it says how Israeli hackers hit Ruto's team. In fact, that story is even bigger than the one for Dr. Fred Matiangi. They've put that at the bottom. Now, in this video, I want us to look into what these new developments of hacking mean for Raila Odinga and Azimio and also for the Israelis moving forward. But before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, Hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, what does this mean for the Israelis? Under normal circumstances, this would mean that an investigation will be opened into the Israeli government's involvement in the Kenyan election. Although it's very much unlikely that the Israeli government itself engaged itself in a cybercrime to sabotage the Kenyan election because there is nothing for them to gain. Whether William Ruto is president or Raila Odinga is president, they are a nation that has been helping Kenya year in, year out. Even our security forces, the elite security forces that we talk about, most of them go to Israel to get their training. Israel even sends some donations to Kenya, so there is nothing for them to gain. We are not in any direct competition with their government. We are not competing for resources, we are not competing for market share, we are not competing for world dominance or anything. Everyone is concerned with their own things. So it's very likely that it was not the Israeli government, but some Israeli citizens. Anytime you are talking about one million people, I know their population is bigger than that, but anytime you're talking about a million people, you will always find anomalies. Amongst a million people, there must be two or three thieves, there must be a thousand uh, drivers, a thousand engineers, you'll get a sample of everything. So there is no nation that is clean from top to bottom. Even in Israel, I'm sure that there are some groups of crooks who are engaging in cybercrime. And those individuals are the ones who could have been tasked 
by Azimio to come into the country, travel expenses paid for, housing accommodation paid for, food paid for, security paid for, and transportation paid for. Just so that they can monitor IEBC and so that they can monitor what Kenya Kwanza is doing. That is why Dennis Itumbi, his phone was tapped and also uh, Davis Chirchir. The two of them were under serious cyber warfare during the election period. But they weren't too sure what was happening at the time. This whole story is what is giving out uh, a greater revelation as to what is happening. So what we are hoping is that the Israeli government will cooperate with the Kenyan government to find out who these perpetrators are because videos have actually leaked of the faces of those very Israelis. We are not talking about invisible people like the whistleblower Raila Odinga talks about. These are people who the video is out. It's just that I can't play it because of copyright law. I can put the video here and that will be a lot of trouble on my end. But what I'll do, I'll just find the link of the video when you're done watching this, I'll just, you'll go to the comment section, you'll find it there, and then you can get to see it for yourself. Those are actual Israelis who hacked some phones of some officials in Kenya Kwanzaa and also the IEBC. So if the Israelis cooperate with the Kenyan government, they can actually find these people because their faces are already out there and justice can be brought upon them. And also those people can testify and let us know who it is that was paying them from the Kenyan side. Who is it that invited them to do this? Who is it that paid them to do this? and for how long were they doing it and when exactly did the discussion start and end because this is the exact same problem that the americans had with the russians the truth of the matter is that there was a lot of damning information about hillary clinton that was released to the public that made some people decide she's the wrong fit it could be that the cyber attack on her server was done by an american or it could be that it was done by a russian but the investigation that was done at the time shows that it's the russians who did it and Kenya could be very well facing the same thing. Now, the second thing that can happen is that the IBC can actually sue Raila Odinga for defamation. Though the only problem is that we live in a banana republic whereby some people are untouchable. <laughs> Even the judge who goes to say that I found so and so guilty, their life will immediately be in danger. That is the kind of fanatism we have in this country. So much so that somebody can swear themselves in and continue to enjoy freedom. But someone else can go steal a chicken and spend at least a week in prison. But either way, the IEBC will have legal grounds to go on to sue Raila Odinga because of defamation. How so? The reason is that Raila Odinga was saying that the IEBC had been compromised and it was working with Jose Camargo of Smartmatic, who was actually in Venezuela receiving the Form 34As, tampering with them, and then remitting them to the public portal. When in real sense, Raila Odinga had his own group of hackers in the country conducting what they are calling ethical hacking, when in fact, it's very much unethical. The chairman of IEBC was not aware. In fact, the very use of the word ethical needs to be thrown out because they actually went on to hack the phones of Dennis Itumbi and uh, Davis Churchill. There's nothing ethical about that. That is called a cyber crime. It's cyber warfare, especially the fact that it's being done by citizens of a foreign nation. So he can actually be sued for that. You cannot hack the IEBC servers when you yourself, you're a candidate. That is like sitting for KCSE, you go break into neck offices and then you are say you are doing ethical breaking and entering. There is nothing like that. When you are a candidate, you cannot uh, interact with the examination material. You cannot go there to look at paper one, paper two. You go there to look at the ink they are using. Nothing like that concerns you. When you are the candidate, you just focus on uh, your test. You just focus on the task that has been put ahead of you. But Raila Odinga was campaigning and watching the IBC and watching Itumbi's phone at the same time. I'm sure this is just the surface of what was happening. There is a lot more that was happening that I'm sure if an actual investigation will be opened and I'm hoping the Israeli government uh, cooperates, there is a lot that you will be shocked to find out. And these are the reasons why President William Ruto was saying we need to have an actual inquiry. But Raila Odinga didn't want that he was bringing a whistleblower to dilute and confuse the whole process. This whistleblower turns out all along could have been an Israeli hacker. That is why they are hiding him and they, and they can't produce the very whistleblower. Because you can imagine if they say, he's our whistleblower, and the whistleblower is not even Kenyan, he's an Israeli. He came here on whose orders? He's not even a citizen. How does he know what is happening in the IEBC if he or she did not hack? And ironically, a day after President William Ruto held a successful prayer for the nation, Raila Odinga is coming out to say those prayers are useless and he's going to have his own national prayer day to pray for the IEBC. <laughs> Politics is a very dirty game and you need to have very thick skin if you're going to survive. But as usual guys, that's just my opinion, so please drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now in the event you're here for the first time, 
please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform just head on over to youtube search for david wafula hit the subscribe button and you're gonna be getting a ton of content of this nature if politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios